All right, we're ready to go. Um, hey, everybody, for, for joining us, either in Zoom or in YouTube. Um, this is the Getting to Know, you, Getting to know Michigan um, the Spectrum Center. Um, so we'll be talking about the Spectrum Center. Um, but first, who will be talking at you? Good start. Um, <laughs> so hi, my name is Laurent. I use they, them, theirs pronouns. Um, and I am the event and partnerships uh, program specialist at the Spectrum Center. Uh, Alyssa, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, my name is Alyssa Garcia and my pronouns are she, her, and I am the learning and development program specialist at Spectrum. Um, and we are just here to just like talk about our respective areas um, and hopefully uh, answer any questions you have about like LGBTQ inclusion or education or anything like that um, at the University of Michigan. So kind of uh, just an agenda. Um, we're gonna be covering generally what is the Spectrum Center, um, what kind of work we do, uh, what's our office like. We're really excited to, to be able to go back to the office. Um, how do students generally engage with us? What kind of events do we do? How you can contact us and then we can do a q a at the end collecting any like additional questions um i did want to add this disclaimer we're still trying to figure out exactly what services will look like in the fall um so some of the things that we mentioned may not happen or they may happen um in a different format um i just like want to put everybody's um expectations um set uh right now that uh we're still figuring out what the fall is just like everybody else so um, please bear with us in, the, in that transition. Real quick about the, the Spectrum Center. Um, we were co-founded in 1971 by uh, Jim Toy and Cynthia Gare. Um, if you're familiar with the area, you probably know the, the name Jim Toy because he's actually also uh, the namesake of the Jim Toy Community Center, uh, which is an Ann Arbor-based LGBTQ support services. If you don't know who they are, look them up. They're great. Um, so they were co-founded co co in 1971, and um, we were the first um, staffed office for queer students in the Institution of Higher Learning in the United States. So we were the first university to have a LGBTQ center that like actually paid people to do their work. Um, and fun fact, if you know math, um, since we were founded in 1971, 2021 is our 50th anniversary, which we'll be celebrating here this year. Um, I'm super excited about that. I love our little logo. Um, so, and we'll be mentioning it more. Um, and our official mission is uh, through sexual orientation, gender identity, and ex gender expression as our framework. The Spectrum Center is committing to enriching campus experience and developing students as individuals and members of our community. Our work is accomplished through, through a student-centered intersectional lens. Um, kind of translating that, uh, we do a lot of LGBTQ work and we focus on you and your needs, um, but yeah. So here's kind of an overview of all of the things that we're doing. Um, we kind of have three different areas that we tend to work within. Um, programming, programming and events is my area of expertise. Um, education and training um, is Alyssa and so support services. Um, so programming and events are pretty self-explanatory. They are the things that we put on for you to go to. Um, we do stuff for Welcome, Welcome Week. Um, we celebrate like national LGBTQ holidays. Um, we do a lot of collaborations. Uh, many of our, our things are either general or identity or interest based. Um, and then Lavender graduation um, also started here. Uh, this will be the 27th year actually uh, celebrating Lavender graduation. So if you're, you're graduating or will ever graduate and want to be a part of that, you'll get a lot of information about it leading up to the months. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, education and training, um, this is seen more on the back end or on the academic side. Um, faculties uh, and departments will bring us in and um, ask for customized work, customized workshops. Uh, the ADDT trainings is our like all day, very intense um, educational workshop. Um, my voice panels are panels of student speakers who talk about their experience. And there's also consultations just bringing us in like, hey, I need your expertise. Um, Am I doing this right? Uh, we do that both for like education stuff as well as events. Um, and then support services. Uh, these are the ones we are pretty sure are going to happen this year. Um, we have center space drop-ins. Center space is the word for our um, support groups, um, identity-based or affinity-based. Um, we have a gender inclusive living experience, Jilly. We have this partnership with housing to have a floor of one of the residence halls 
not only be like LGBTQ safe, but LGBTQ centered, um, where a lot of your activities and your RA and all that stuff come together to do more education around gender identity and exploration of that. Um, we have two different mentorship programs. Um, we have a cohort uh, called Perspectives, open to any new students, um, freshmen and transfers. And um, hopefully bringing this back uh, is free and rapid um, HIV and STI testing. Um, the exact timing of that is still up in the air, um, but ideally we will be bringing that back. Um, these are all links. Clearly you can't click on them on your screen, uh, but at the end, I actually have a link to the slides that you can just hop on and click all the links that, that your heart desires. Um, so our space, um, we're really excited to go back. I don't know, I'm really excited to go back. Um, we were for a couple of years in um, a building called uh, the Old Trotter Building. That's not the correct name. I can't remember, 1443 Washtenaw. Yeah, there it is, 1443 Washtenaw. Um, while the Michigan Union was uh, renovated, um, Michigan Union reopened in January and then closed in March. Um, so we didn't get a lot of time with our space, but um, we're really excited to welcome back, welcome people back in. This is our main suite um, of offices. This is where most of the pro staff work and where you'll be walking in. Um, you can kind of see the front desk over there. And if you peeked around the corner, that's where all of our offices are. Um, we are open Monday to Friday, five, 9 to 5 p.m. Um, there's going to be at least one staff member, if not more, in there um, available to engage with you. Um, and we do have plans for being open later on a regular basis. Again, still in the works. Um, after hours, um, if we don't have those later hours, um, you'll say, see student org meetings, um, support groups, and sometimes um, after hours events and programs um, because this space is really cool and really, we really, really like using it. Um, this is the cooler part uh, of this suite. Um, and this is actually a space that we share with the multi-ethnic student affairs office. Um, if you can see this, uh, like little door area that's actually a collapsible wall and um, Mesa has the same space mirrored. So it's a really, really long, narrow space, but it's open for students to come and hang out and work. Um, we're still working on guidelines and like what that means um, this semester, but it's really, um, the space is meant for students to come and just be in. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to figure that out. Also still, this is kind of where the, the open later activities would be held. Um, but yeah, definitely keep up with us. I'm really excited about this part. Um, and yeah, same thing. This is the, this is a one continuous office. It's just called different things. All right, so you saw our space and you kind of know what we're about. How do you engage with us? Um, everybody loves hanging out with us. We're very cool. Um, so there are two main ways. Um, you can volunteer and here um, I have some categories generally. Um, again, these can change year to year. Um, you can educate classes through the My Voice panels. There we go, the My Voice panels. Um, you can join our student organization. I'm actually the advisor of the Spectrum Center Programming Board. Um, and uh, we have an application-based program um, that we will hopefully be opening up soon. Um, you can lead one of the support groups or start one. Um, definitely talk to Alyssa if you're interested in any of that. Um, upperclassmen are, can be a mentor to, to younger students um, through one of our mentorship programs. Um, you can also better the wider community because we often partner with uh, other organizations such as Unify HIV Health and Beyond and SAGE, um, the organization for LGBTQ elders. Um, we offer different programs based through there. and other stuff. Sometimes we'll call out with a need of like, hey, we need some pictures. Hey, what's your story? Um, and, you know, that is a way of volunteering and a way, way of engaging that we really appreciate. On the flip side, if you want to find that support in community, um, you know, we went over some of the programs and we'll be talking more in just a second, um, but new students can get guidance and connection. Um, there's identity-based support groups. Um, there's student-to-student -student and faculty-to-student mentorship. And there's also funding. We have scholarships and grants um, available for students and organizations respectively. Um, not mentioning this, and I forgot to add the link, so I'll try to slip it in there at the end. Um, as of right now, um, today, 
July 28th, um, we had some student positions open. So if you're interested in working with us, um, check out our website, our socials, all that fun stuff. Um, again, July 28th, 2021, if you're seeing this in 2025, unfortunately, those positions are no longer open. Um, but check, maybe we'll have something open anyway. Alyssa. All right, so one of the programs we plan on doing uh, or bringing back is Freshspectives. And as Laurent mentioned briefly earlier, this is a cohort for either first year students or transfer students. So your first year at the University of Michigan. And this is something that we are going to have be student led. Two of those positions that Laurent mentioned are co-leads uh, for helping out with Freshspectives. And this really is meant to be a space uh, run by students for students with Spectrum sort of being the, the staff on hand to provide resources and funding and just general guidance. But it is really meant to be um, a place for first year students to come and meet up with other first year students, uh, get some resources, ask questions, because it is the first time at this university, possibly your first year at any university. So Freshspectives is really meant uh, to provide some help, some community, some resources, um, and you know, a way to connect with other like-minded and similarly identified individuals on campus. For our mentorship opportunities, we have two different ones. The first one is GPS, the Guidance Perspective Support. This is the mentorship program where it is peer to peer. So if you are um, a second, third, fourth year, so on student, you can be a mentor to another student, possibly younger, uh, possibly the same age as, depending on where things fall, uh, but it is community, uh, similarly identified students, you can put in the application that we have on our website right now uh, to apply to be a mentor or a mentee. Um, and that is, you know, student to student. We also have the MAPS, which is the Mentorship and Professional Personal Support. And that is pairing students with a faculty or staff member as a mentor. Uh, you can also apply for that on our website. We have the link there as well. Um, and in the application for both of these programs, you can submit what you are hoping to get out of a mentorship relationship, um, what identities you would prefer and feel most comfortable if your mentor had, um, some touch points to um, how you want your mentorship to be shaped. And those are live now. We are currently recruiting uh, both MAPS and GPS mentors and mentees. And later in the fall, there will be a sort of kickoff uh, meeting event orientation uh, for prospective mentees and mentors where you can get to know people, have conversations, and there will be an orientation for mentees to help navigate um, how you can get the most out of your mentorship experience. And then the last thing I have is we have our center space drop-ins. Now these are um, identity or affinity based uh, spaces that are sort of peer support groups and sort of just uh, a way for social engagement for folks to find community with similarly identified individuals. Currently the, the center spaces that we have running are the trans, non-binary, agender, gender fluid center space for folks who are you know, trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming um, that are not cisgender to have um, community. We have a um, ace arrow, uh, the asexual aromantic center space for folks who are ace, any form of you know demi or gray asexual. Um, and those two meet regularly. We have a center space for postdocs that is also meeting uh, virtually. And all of these center spaces um, are individually sort of deciding based on group comfort, whether they wanna be in-person, virtual, but hybrid. Um, other center spaces we've had in the past include a bi, pan, and sexually fluid center space, as well as a uh, queer, trans, indigenous, um, queer, trans, black, indigenous, people of color center space. Um, 
and there was one for uh, students in Greek life. Um, if there isn't a center space currently running that you are interested, you can absolutely email me to see about setting up one um, and we can work through that. Honestly, with center spaces, the more the merrier. If we can help people find community, we're super happy to do so. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Um, our support services are like my favorite thing. Um, I'm not supposed to say that because the events will hear me, but I think the support services are the best thing we have. Um, but speaking of events, um, this is my area of expertise. Um, when you think about LGBTQ events, um, it can kind of like you can have the stereotype of like it being all one sort of thing, educational, social, like, but we try to um, offer like a really wide span of events, um, social, educational, academic, identity based community co connections. Um, really all kinds, and they're generally open to everybody. Um, very few of our events are gated to um, specific identities or even U of M students. We have a lot of community members who participate, which is a really, really cool thing. Um, we uh, tend to kind of uh, program around some specific national observances. Um, we tend to do Bi Plus Visibility Day, International Pronouns Day, Transgender Day of Visibility, LGBTQ History Month, Transgender Day of Remembrance, those aren't in chronological order, um, but you know these kind of nationally rec recognized um, and celebrated or observed days, uh, we program around to bring awareness of these different identities and these different movements. And I just wanted to touch on, we're gonna have a lot of unique 50th anniversary events. Um, there's going to be a really cool um, integration with homecoming this year. Um, there's planning to be an LGBTQ symposium in the winter. Um, we are actually developing a partnership packet so that more offices can kind of do LGBTQ work um, without needing like direct like work from us so that you can see more and more varied programming from more and more people um, while it's still being like quality and, and sensitive. Um, and this is an event, but you'll see a lot of unique giveaways because people love free stuff and we love giving it. Um, so not on top of our like pronoun pins and our stickers and all that fun stuff, you'll be finding some uh, really unique stuff this year that you won't be able to find anywhere else. Well, we're taking a quick break to transition. We did get a question. I typed out an answer, but I thought I would bring it out loud as well for when folks are viewing on YouTube. Uh, someone asked if Freshspectives, uh, if the application was available yet. Uh, it is currently not available, but the application will be live by the start of Welcome Week uh, for folks who are interested. And it can be found on our Spectrum Center website. Thank you for answering that. Um, yeah, so we are kind of at, at the lead up of all of these applications getting ready to launch. Um, applications for the programming board is ready, is almost ready um, and a lot of our services. So uh, I, our website and all of our socials are like the best way. And speaking of our website and all of our socials, um, here's how you can get in contact with us. Um, the staff at the Spectrum Center, both professional and student, um, we love engaging with you. We love answering questions. We love hanging out um professionally uh and generally we are here for whatever need that you think we might be able to fill um this year you'll be able to visit us in our physical space um fingers crossed um it, at 5 30 south state street um which is the michigan union um room 3020 we're on the third floor um you can give us a call at 734-763-4186 uh, probably wait until the semester starts because we're not in the office yet um so there's nobody to answer your call um but you know once we get into the like later august area um we'll be happy to take your phone calls um you can email us um our main email is spectrumcenter at umich.edu um and our website's very similar it's spectrumcenter.umich.edu um those are really good ways of getting a hold of us and just kind of seeing what we're all about um and we're tr continuously trying to update our website so that you have the most up-to-date information um we also have facebook twitter and instagram um those are probably the fastest ways to get a hold of us uh, well not get a hold of us to, to see our updates um because it's just a little bit easier to, to post a facebook post than to rewrite a whole website page um, but really, if you follow us on any of these, you'll get a lot of um, important information, timely information. Um, that's where our job postings are right now, um, but also event announcements. When we have those applications out, they will be uh, published there. Um, 
So yeah, I encourage you. And I don't, I don't just say that as the person who runs our social media right now. Um, please join us on our socials. Um, and yeah, that is kind of the end, um, you know, right now. Uh, I included a link and I'll be posting this in the description, um, but you can actually get these slides. Um, so all the clickable links are clickable if you just go to bit.ly bit.ly slash I'm not going to read it out. Um, I will just give it to everybody. Um, this is uh, case sensitive in case you're watching it and don't have access to the link. So you have to write it exactly how it's spelled. Um, no, that was kind of short, but I know that um, LGBTQ support and engagement is so unique to individuals. So we would love to, to answer some questions or just kind of generally talk about our experiences um, in a more informal manner. Um, thank you, Alyssa. Alyssa put it in the chat. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I am ending and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm going to find the graphic for our um, postings. Um, if you happen to have any questions, definitely pop those into the, the Q&A. Um, really appreciate the question about uh, fresh perspectives. So yeah, anything you want to talk about, we're here for. All right. Well, if there are no more questions, um, I think we will go ahead and wrap up here. If you do have any questions in the future, feel free to contact us through our website or email spectrumcenter at umich.edu or spectrumcenter.umich.edu, and we will be happy to answer any questions or comments you have then. Thank you so much for everybody who attended and or watched. Um, come talk to us.